Every time that we make a new work, we try to do something different. We play with different technologies or we play with different forms and actually often playing with totally different genres of work that we're deciding to make stories in. Our projects are centered around, I guess, the banner of the puppet being this designed object that's not a human but that we all come to believe in and using that idea as a symbol for the way that we ask an audience to believe in all sorts of different elements in our work. And I think what we're trying to do as a company too is to even further stretch that idea of what is a puppet. It's sort of fun, it's like we're reinventing the wheel every time we try to make a project, you know? <laughs> the process is always totally different. Yeah. So Dead Puppet Society is a visual theatre company. We've been around for about 13 years now. We've run productions all around the country and also in New York and London. The concept came about as a result of a university assignment. Yeah, we met at uni. Yeah, it was like the start of a company and um, yeah, and our relationship. We kind of knew after the first work that we put up back at Metro Arts in 2009 that we were onto something. Audiences seemed excited about what we were doing. I think what sets Dead Puppet Society apart is that we're really, really focused on the way that lots of different theatrical forms can be a part of telling a story. So the work that we make places just as much importance on the design and the technical elements as it does on the script. It's really about seamless integration of all of those different elements and how they come together to tell a really important story. Hello? Hello? Ishmael is Moby Dick reimagined for a new millennium. It features the character Ishmael, who is a climate refugee, and she's given the chance to have a new life aboard the MV Pequod by taking a voyage to the outer solar system. Welcome to paradise, Ishmael. There's no such place left on dead earth. Ishmael is a bit of a wanderer. She's a lost soul. We sort of see her in this world trying to survive, but also going on a journey from feeling quite alone to actually realising she needs people around her to let people in. Well, we'll let's move through the script actually so that we hit exactly what those shifting points are. That the most exciting thing about Ishmael is I guess that it kind of exists on stage in two worlds. The fictional world of the narrative that we're following as an audience, but at any given moment, the audience could glance to the left or the right to see exactly how that show is being made directly in front of them live. I think it works, though. Ishmael was actually conceptualised as two separate elements. We knew that we wanted to do an adaptation of Moby Dick, looking at themes around environmental custodianship and human consumption. And then totally aside from that, we knew that we wanted to make a space opera style work where this filmic experience was created live in front of an audience. And both of those had actually been on the boil for about 12 months before we realised that they were the same thing <laughs> and that there was a way to meld that technology and that story together. So all of the locations and all of the large sequences within the work are created using miniature props and tiny little models and dioramas that sit on the side of the stage. And then those models are filmed by these phenomenal tiny studio cameras which are mounted on robotic heads. And that content is then captured by a computer system which replaces the green screen with content that our projection designer has created. And that all then gets put together and projected onto the backdrop which our performers then perform in front of. But then that loop sort of comes full circle because the performers who are then playing these human characters are also the individuals who are responsible for controlling the models which the camera is capturing. So there's this high level of integration. We've done multiple creative developments of this work and I think really that's what's been key to creating something that is really cutting edge and fresh and exciting. We often try to work with some of the same creatives. We run a very collaborative room. Yeah, the team behind this project is enormous and we work with our collaborators in a really long-term sense. They're involved from the conceptualisation of the work, usually even before we have a script written. It's a massive team and an incredible act of commitment and, yeah, and love from every single one of them. I think puppetry has absolutely changed. I think Warhorse and the work of Handspring absolutely has to be acknowledged as a moment where people realised that it wasn't just for telling dinky stories to young people, that there's actually this incredible poetic potential behind puppets. Within the work that we're doing as a company, we're also sort of trying to push that envelope a little bit. 
in Ishmael, there's nothing that I think you would actually call specifically a puppet, but the entire stage machine itself, we have rooms that are on tracks and spinners so that performers are manipulating them to bring them to life and to give them character. Oh, we do have spaceships on sticks. That feels like a puppet, but also just feels like the world's coolest toy. <laughs> It's so great, I think, sometimes when we're in the heightened stress of these productions to realise just how incredibly lucky we are to have the support that we have and, and to have these phenomenal teams of individuals around us. But yeah, I don't know. I think we have the best job in the world. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's a, a lot of hard work. There's a lot of late nights and round the clock working, but I think every time we get to opening night, the payoff is always so huge that we seem to be convinced to do it all again, and here we are. Yeah, <laughs> it's good.